The Sphere in Las Vegas is easily one of the coolest attractions in the city. The only problem is, it's really expensive, and also, I don't live in Las Vegas. Fortunately, I just found out we have Sphere at home. Welcome to the Dome. It was the brainchild of some of the folks who worked on the OG in Las Vegas, but due to uh, <clears throat> budgetary constraints, they had to get a little creative to make their vision a reality. See, while you and I might share fond childhood memories of laser light show night at the planetarium, when this Zeiss projection system was current, we hadn't even landed on the moon yet. And this one in particular is so broken that even the platform that lifts it up into position is leaking hydraulic fluid. So they've had to be a little scrappy, or at least as scrappy as something can be when it is packed to the gills with 4K Christie projectors, not to mention 20,000 watts of JBL surround. With that said, guys, budgets are relative. And when you consider how much less they had to work with here, the end result is absolutely stunning. And we're gonna give you guys a behind the scenes tour of how it was all stitched together right after I stitch in this segue to our sponsor. Delta Hub. Their Carpios stand out from those generic foam wrist rests by being able to glide along with your hand as it moves. Pick up an exclusive LTT edition colorway using our link down below. This is incredible. I haven't set foot in what used to be known as the Star Theater at the H.R. McMillan Space Center since I was a child watching a Charlotte Diamond laser show and outwardly, nothing has changed. This was a real challenge for Tobias and his team at Volumetric Camera Systems because not only did they have to modernize a very old installation, but they had to do so while it was open the whole time doing daytime shows. That means everything they did had to be done in bite-sized chunks during closing hours. Take for instance, cleaning the screen. See this panel behind me, how it's a little bit whiter than the rest of them? Okay, do you also see how the rest of the dome has these bright visible seams between the panels? Well, what Tobias's team discovered is that those seams aren't supposed to be visible, but in order to eliminate them, they have to wipe down the front of the panel and get around to the backside with a vacuum to remove these 70 years of dust and crud that is built up in the perforations of the projection screen perforations that are needed to make the screen acoustically transparent for the carefully positioned speakers all around the dome. But enough yik yak about what hasn't changed, let's take you somewhere where few people have ever been. The beating heart of the planet Arium, the server room where this rack of Nehalem era servers runs the daytime shows, but has been replaced with a single machine hidden behind the screen that we are going to, ugh. Go find, I guess? Good gravy. I'm not sure quite what I expected, but <laughs> not working light switches apparently, but you can really feel the history in this place. All the different eras of equipment that were in here. Like they've got these ancient DC power connectors that apparently act as triggers for the old effects projectors for the older shows right next to a random D-Link switch. Here's some tubing that I assume was for a fog machine at some point. We've still got fog machines, but apparently we don't use that tube anymore. <gasps> oh, okay, this is cool. Here's one of our new Christie projectors. Ooh, do not bump. I touched it ever so lightly. No, no, it's fine. You can touch it, I don't care. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> Coolest part of this one though, is this is one of the small ones. They're using three Christie 4K projectors for their mains and three of these smaller ones to kind of fill in the holes because as you guys can plainly see, it's a bit of an oddly shaped screen. In total, that gives them a 10K by 10K resolution image. The original plan had actually been to use one of the big ones with the fisheye lens that you guys saw in the intro, but what they found was it just plain wasn't enough resolution. So they went with this stitched together approach. We're gonna go find one of the big projectors, but first I wanted to show you guys behind the screen. How freaking cool is this, man? So cool. Hi, Adam. Something I didn't really think about before being back here is how much of the light gets completely wasted just blasting through the screen into this layer of both acoustic and light absorbing material that lines the inside of the dome. Man, there's so much flipping power. It's like a contractor asked, how many outlets would you like? And they were like, yes. Like there's 20, 
within my arm span here. 22, 24. Oh, there's a power strip. There's, an, there's like another 10. What? January 1990 that was installed. This, a little newer. This is one of the big Christie's and they had to come up with, again, the theme is scrappy, right? An innovative solution for cooling it. They've got three of these 550 CFM AC fans, each dedicated to one of the large projectors, just kind of blowing out here to be taken up by the intake for the entire room here. And wow, it really does blow. Like, can you see my hair moving? Sorry, it really does suck, I mean, but it's good at it. Anywho, each of these is running to a Christie D4K 2560, and these are the main workhorses of the setup. These are capable of 4K 60 FPS. They're also capable of 25,000 lumens of light output, which is where all the heat comes from. Ooh, wow, the bottom's actually quite hot, but is what makes them capable of projecting onto such large screens. Fun fact, these actually use the same model bulb as some of the local movie theaters. So when they had a show emergency and needed a replacement bulb real quick, apparently the folks at the Scotiabank Theater were bros and uh, lent them a lamp to get them back up and running. Fun fact, by the way, whether it was intentional or not, this textured concrete that separates the cove or the, the backstage area, as they call it, from the theater itself does an amazing job of blocking all of the fan noise. Check this out. Right? Once you're in the theater area, it's not disruptive at all. Neat. Also here in the Cove is an unassuming looking Lenovo Think Station that acts as the heart of their nightly shows. It uses a 12 core third gen Threadripper processor, 128 gigs of RAM, and probably most importantly, four NVIDIA Quadro P6000 GPUs with a Quadro Sync card, allowing them to output to 16 different displays and keep everything perfectly synchronized, whether they're running pre-rendered content or adding particle effects that are rendered in real time or using Unreal Engine 5 or Touch Designer. The plan is actually to replace the old girl with an HP workstation that uses NVIDIA's new A6000 GPUs, but they just haven't had the time and Looking around here, I definitely can see why. Oh, one last thing that I missed is that they're not running HDMI to all of the projectors. They're actually using adapters so that they can run their video signals over category cable, or as we'd more commonly refer to it, network cable. That's it for downstairs. Let's go up. Apparently this door is the fastest way to get there. No, they actually made it specially for you. It's oh, your size. Stop. See, authorized personnel only. That didn't even end up being the fastest way. Now this is cool. You can see the entire curvature of it. You can see all the wiring, speaker mounts. Woo! Man, I would not want to have to haul stuff up here. Like, how'd these stairs get up here? Never mind the stairs. What about the dual 18 inch driver subwoofer that's under here from JBL? How did you guys get this up here? Oh, uh, we didn't. That was 15 years ago. Whoever did the install of that. Oh, okay. This was a 15 years ago project. But they just plugged it in. They didn't do any calibration. They didn't do any tuning. They just plugged it in and left. So there's a lot of room for improvement. More speakers. I think we're looking at the center channel here and oh, no way, a ladder. Has anyone ever dreamed of climbing the planetarium screen? I hadn't until this day. Now I know that that's been my entire life's ambition. Holy crap, this is nuts. Holy crap, I am very high up. Does it go all the way over the top? It does. <gasps> that's crazy. Oh, there's a speaker at the very top. What's that one? It's called a Zenith speaker. That's sick. Yeah, it's used for effects, used for voices. Uh, it's not part of the standard 5.1, but it exists. This is the apex of the planet Arium. Goodness, I am extremely high up. He's going somewhere where no man has ever gone. Yeah, don't forget, if I ever fall and die during a video, you gotta monetize my death. Oh, we already got a sponsor for your funeral, don't worry. That was the coolest thing that I had no idea that I wanted to try. You guys ready to game on this thing? Because I am. 
To get this done, we brought a 5090 based gaming machine from home and Tobias has a way to connect that? Yeah, we're using NDI to connect over the network and sending the 4K ultrawide directly into the stitching computer, the Lenovo. So you're saying the latency is not gonna be great? Mm, we'll see if you notice it. I think I'll probably notice it. Okay. Yeah, he's a little whiner about that. Guy. Oh, come on now. Yeah, you're always like, oh, it's the latency so bad. The it's my job. So bad. It's my job to whine about that. Whoa, buddy. I don't know if I'm gonna care about the latency with a screen this big. What are you doing right now? This is just various skewing, stretching, manipulation of the image for our curved screen? Yeah, so what you got here is a touch center template created by Andrew Hazelden, and what these are are ST maps. These ST maps are basically distorting the image to match what is on the dome, and we have various different projections. We have 160 degrees, 150 degrees, 140 degrees. We can change and stretch the screen to be whatever perspective you want. Kind of see what it's doing over here while it's loading. It's basically taking our screen and then stretching it like this yeah. to match the dome. I gotta go try this. Wait, uh, you actually had a mouse pad? Yeah, never leave home without it. Literally not a week ago, we had to get you a different flight because you left without your passport. Are you telling me that that, that was packed? Yeah, oh yeah, I had my mouse pad. You're missing the bigger picture here, Adam. <laughs> I've seen the, <laughs> the big, big picture. It's pretty <laughs> big. Dude, I don't know how this works, uh, something to do with the way it's cute, but the way it almost has a 3D look to it. It looks like it's coming towards us though. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's like a CRT bubble out. Yeah. As opposed to going into like a dome. Dude, this is incredible. Yeah. He's right, the latency is actually not that bad. <laughs> look at this. This is incredible. It's all the butt of the car though. Uh, yeah. Look at how dinky you, like from the right angle, you're like, yeah, it's a little skewed. It's a little skewed. Like all the way over there. That's where your freaking ammo is. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And then your objectives are all the way over there. Yeah, you can almost read them. I am gonna be, I am gonna be ill. This is, this is a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have gamed on some wild displays. This is new. Like theoretically, this is the same as just sitting closer to a smaller screen. And yet it's not. Like in theory, you'd think like, oh, if you put an iPad right here, it would be just as immersive. No. But your eyes can feel the difference because they have to focus at different, at different stuff. What? It looks and it feels larger than life. Of course, this is not the kind of content that it's intended for. So why don't we invite some paid friends to uh, come and check out one of the real shows? I think that would be fun. We're all here at the Dome to see Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. It's gonna be super cool. If you're excited, say woo! woo! Squarespace, whether your business is just getting off the ground or you've been in the dark ages of cold calling for a while, a website will give you that extra push to take things to the next level. That's where Squarespace comes in. Their Squarespace Blueprint Guided Design System gives you the ultimate starter pack to get the creative juices flowing with professionally curated layout and styling options. Then, once you've laid the foundation, use their Fluid Engine Editor and its code-free drag and drop elements to customize to your heart's content. Your website also comes with integrated SEO tools and advanced analytics so you can optimize what's working and identify what might need a little tweaking. You can even set up your website to take payments via credit card, PayPal, and more. So head on over to squarespace.com LTT for a free trial and save 10% on your first purchase of a website or a domain. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can see any of the shows that Tobias and his team puts on at DomeVancouver.com. That's the one. We'll have that linked down below. Thanks so much for giving us this full access tour. I hope you don't get into too much trouble for me climbing the dome. We tried to stop you. Yeah, they did. I, I overpowered him. <laughs>